This Hi. has to be the last question. All right, I'll make it quick. Yeah. Um, earlier when you talked about criminality and creativity trends in, uh, in men peaking at 14, it reminded me of something you said. I think it was Joe Rogan um, talking about SJWs and kind of in how they create their own chaos, talking about how adolescents have this drive to change the world. And I was wondering if, uh, if those three, the criminality, creativity, drive to change the world, are linked, and if so, if they manifest differently in men and women, um, and if they kind of come from the same area. Well, I think they are linked. But I'm going to concentrate more on the next, second part of your okay. question. So I'm going to ask you guys to some, think about something. So I talked to a friend of mine the other day. He's a very, very smart guy, and we've been talking about well, all the sorts of things that we've been talking about tonight for a long time. And we were talking about the, relatively, the relative evolutionary roles of men and women. This is speculative, obviously. And, and because our research did indicate, it's tentative research so far, that, that the, the, the SGS, SJW sort of equality above all else philosophy is more prevalent among women. It's predicted by the personality factors that are more common among women. So agreeableness and high negative emotion. Primarily agreeableness. But in addition, it's also predicted by being female. And that's interesting because in most of the personality research that I've done, and as far as I know in the literature at, you know, in, more broadly speaking, most of the time you can get rid of the attitudinal differences between men and women, or at least reduce them by controlling for personality. So if you take a feminine man and a masculine woman, then, you know, the, the, the poles reverse. But that didn't seem to be the case with political correctness. And so I've been thinking about that a lot because well, men are bailing out of the humanities like mad. And pretty much out of the universities except for STEM. The women are moving in like mad. And they're also moving into the political sphere like mad. And this is new, right? We've never had this happen before and we do, know, know, do not know what the significance of it is. It's only 50 years old. And so we were thinking about this. And so I don't know what you think about this proposition, but imagine that, that, that historically speaking, it's something like, Women were responsible for distribution, and men were responsible for production. Something like that. And maybe, and maybe that's only the case, really, in the tight confines of the immediate family, but that doesn't matter, because that's most of the evolutionary landscape for human beings anyways. What the women does, did was make sure that everybody got enough. Okay, and that seems to me to be one of the things that's driving, at least in part, the SJW demand for, for equity and equality. It's like, let's make sure everybody has enough. It's like, well, look, fair enough, you know, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't argue with that. But there's, there's an antipathy between that and the, the reality of differential productivity, you know, because people really do differ in their productivity. So, all right, so to answer your question fully, I do think that the rebellious tendency of adolescence is associated both with that criminality spike, especially among men, and with creativity, yes. I think that the SJW phenomena is different, and I think it is associated, at least in part, with the rise of women political power. And, and we don't know what women are like when they have political power, because they've never had it. I mean, there's been queens, obviously, and that sort of thing. There's been female authority figures, and females have wielded far more power historically than feminists generally like to admit. But this is a different thing, and we don't know what, what a, a truly female political philosophy would be like, but it might be especially if it's not been well examined and it isn't very sophisticated conceptually, it could easily be, well, let's make sure things are distributed equally. Well, yeah, but sorry, that, that's just not going to fly. Do you think in terms of the West or the SJWs, and you talked about last lecture as well, creating chaos when there is none, otherwise it'd be static, do you think there would be any validity in saying that in a country like Canada where we're pretty gender equal, is there any merit to thinking SJWs are trying to create chaos even when there arguably is none on a mass level, obviously there's still problems. Why would they do that? Otherwise it would be static and that drive. Well, that, it, that's... It wouldn't, but I'm so just I wondering. So read this, this, I read this quote once, and I don't, don't remember who, who said it. It might have been Robert Heinlein for crying out loud, science fiction author, that springs to mind, but it probably, it probably wasn't. And the, the, the proposition was that men tested ideas and that women tested men. And I kind of like that. <laughs> There's something about that, you know, and now it obviously it's an overgeneralization, but we also don't know to what degree women test men surely through provo provocation. It's a lot, because like if you want to test someone, 
you don't have a like little conversation with them. Like you poke the hell out of them and you say, okay, like I'm going to like go after you and see where your weak spots are. And it seems to me that this, it seems to me that in this constant protest and use of shame and, and all of that that goes along with this, with this sort of radical movement towards egalitarianism, that there's a tremendous amount of provocation. And God, I'm going to say this too, even though I shouldn't. But, it, but I, mean, I don't believe this, but I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I thought it was absolutely comical when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Eh? That just, I just thought that was just so insanely comical that at the same time, there's this massive political demand for like, radical equality and, and, uh, and say with regards to sexual behavior and the fastest selling novel the world had ever seen was S&M domination, right? It's like, oh well, we know where the unconscious is going with that one, don't we? <laughs> and, and sometimes I think like, because one of the things that I've really tried to puzzle out and it's not like I believe this, right? I'm just telling you what I've, where the edges of my thinking have been going is that you have this crazy alliance between the feminists and the radical Islamists that I just do not get. It's like the feminists, it's like why they aren't protesting nonstop about Saudi Arabia is just completely beyond me. Like I do not understand it in the least. And I wonder too, I just wonder bloody well, is, this is the Freud in me, is like, is there an attraction? You know, the, is there an attraction that's emerging among the female radicals for that totalitarian male dominance that they've chased out of the West. And I mean, that's a hell of a thing to think, but I am, after all, I am psychoanalytically minded, and I do think things like that. Because, like, I just can see no rational reason for it. The only other rational reason is that, well, the West needs to fall, and so the enemy of my enemy is... My or, friend, is, yeah. yeah, is exactly. Now, what is it? The, the I got that wrong, my... but... The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's and why so Islamists you, tend to vote liberal as well. Yes, well, so that, that could be the case. But I, I'm not going to shake my suspicion about the, this unconscious balancing. Because as the demand for egalitarianism and the eradication of masculinity uh, accelerates, there's going to be a longing in the unconscious for the precise opposite for, for, of that, right? The more you, you scream for equality, the more your unconscious is going to admire dominance. And so, well, that's, 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 well, that's how you think if you're psychoanalytically minded. And, you know, I'm a great admirer of Freud. He knew a hell of a lot more than people like to think. And, and so, which is partly why everyone still hates him, even though it's been a hundred years since he's, you know, really, really been around. So, all right, we should stop.